five. Gonna talk Trump. Gonna talk Cohen, Manafort. Gonna play some video games. Actually, just video game. Locker up. If you haven't seen Locker up yet, it's pretty fun. It's, it's shockingly still relevant. I, I mean, the Russia investigation is never going to end. He's going to have to start arresting people. He is just going to have to start arresting people. really shocking how the United States Constitution is just just brutally ignored at the top and these guys are just dancing to their own tune having a good time stealing the money So, let's go ahead and watch the opening cutscene here. See how we can do playing Tre President Trump against the globalist takeover. They get a fake indictment out of the swamp. It's a palace coup, physical overthrow, his execution. But their big thing is, and, and now Mueller admits this, it's all over the news. Indictment to then wound the president for impeachment. And I very politely replied... Because you'd be in jail. <laughs> when you had a gas machine. <laughs> your toast, your dead meat, your history, wrong. I'm back! Is that Hillary? Hillary, is that you? All right. Let's see if I remember how to play this game. Oh yeah, I definitely do. Spent many, many an hours, many hours testing. Killing the globalist robots. Headshots or one shots against these guys. So while we make our way through the levels, let's discuss recent events. Cohen and Manafort. Verdicts coming in from juries. Everybody's talking about it. What did they do? Will they turn on Trump? But nobody is asking the question, how in the world was the FBI allowed to get this information, these raids, and prosecute these cases in the first place? I don't know how many people have ever read the Constitution or the amendments of the Constitution. Maybe I'm just a weirdo who likes to do that stuff. But the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution says that warrants have to be very specific. They have to have probable cause. And you can't just go into someone's house, take all their stuff and hope they committed a crime that you get them on later. And that was what was done to both Cohen and Manafort. Not really so much Flynn, because he was just... They just indicted him for lying to the FBI during his interview. Strzok was the interviewing agent, by the way. Hilarious, that. Hilarious. So, I mean, you gotta ask yourself this. How would you feel if the FBI... Over the of the 
the next several days you will undoubtedly realize that we are taking back our great country from the evil tyrants that wish to do us harm and destroy the last remaining refuge of shining light. Thanks, Q. But you interrupted me. Now where was I? How would you feel? If the FBI, say, made up some stuff about you, I don't know, colluding with Russia, and then went into your house, took all your records going back 10, 20 years, and then just decided, well, we didn't find any evidence of you colluding with Russia. Golly shucks. Gee golly gee. But what we did find is uh, you broke a tax law 12 years ago. So we're going to give you a max penalty for that sucker. Or uh, you did something that's sort of kind of illegal, but not really. With campaign funds. Whoa, watch those reflection bullets. The whole point of the Fourth Amendment was so the government wasn't allowed to do that. They're not supposed to be able to go in get all your private information, and then do what they want with it after the fact. So it seems to me that creating an excuse just to do that is a clear infringement. Now I guess you got to ask yourself, okay, so how do we prove that they just made up the Russia investigation, right? How do we know for sure that they made it up and that they didn't really think, oh, reflect bullet got me. Let's re-engage. How do we know for sure that they made it up and they knew they were making it up. You know, how do we know that Manafort, Strzok, all these people, even though they hated Trump, how do we know that they didn't think, well, maybe he really did collude with Russia, and that's why they were doing this? Well, I mean, there's no way to go inside their brains, right? Like, we can't... The chances that they wrote this down and said, we don't believe that it's real, but we're doing it anyway, is zero. I mean, no one would ever do that. Uh, so what's the next best thing? Well... I've got a suggestion. How about, based on how many people that they've raided and gotten all their stuff, at some point, with no evidence of Russian collusion, uh, you know, how many people do they have to go through until we decide, all right, this is not a real Russian investigation, you know, before, the, before they get any evidence, right? Like, is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Because I can't really think of another way to prove that they're just making up an investigation and then indicting people on other stuff. Other than the fact that it just keeps happening, you know? I mean, it's crazy. So there should be some kind of standard, maybe, for in the course of a single investigation, you know, how many people you get complete warrants for and indict on different stuff besides what the investigation is supposedly about, you know? I mean, what's... Maybe, like, two people, one person. I mean, sucks for those people still, but uh, we need some kind of litmus test here. The weird thing is, is no one's even talking about it. I guess it's not weird, you know. It's the media for you. Rand Paul's a big Fourth Amendment guy. He could be talking about it. I mean, he's gotten on... Uh, on on the Senate big time and doing filibusters and everything for the whole uh, NSA Patriot Act thing. It, he would come on and just basically say, hey, you can't just write a warrant for Verizon, Mr. Verizon, and then take everyone's stuff because Verizon technically owns, you know, or AT&T or whoever owns all of our communications. It's like if a third-party company is facilitating the transfer of that information, do we no longer own it? You know, I mean, I think that is a more is a more difficult to determine case than uh, than if they could just make up bogus charges and and raid your ass. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, that's a clear Fourth Amendment violation. There's another question I have, and I haven't seen discussed anywhere, and I really don't know the answer to this question. What trouble do government officials get in if they're found to be guilty of breaking the constitution you know i mean like if citizens if citizens break laws written by congress well like we have jail time we have fines we have all these things I, if a 
if a government official with power, like Mueller or Comey, is found to be breaking the Constitution, doing things that are against the United States Constitution, what's the recourse? You know, like, what, do they get fired? I mean, is that really? Like, that seems, seems pretty insulated. Uh, we go to jail, they just sort of get fired, no big deal, whatever, you broke the Constitution. It's like, the Constitution is the highest law on the land. There should be some... Uh, some bigger penalties for that, maybe. I should probably start using some of uh, the weapons up here instead of just trying a solo gun, run and gun all these guys. Let's see. Sniper's great against the shields. Let's get the uh, assault rifle going. There are limited bullets. So it's nice not to use it all. Before you get to the last rounds. Man, I tell you, some of these... Some of these left-leaning Twitter people, though, are just, just the worst. There's just no... There's no logical discussion to be had. There's nothing. It's just... It's all what they want all the time. Never discussing any points. They have no sense of perspective, right? Like, how many American people care if Paul Manafort broke a tax law 12 years ago? I don't think anybody cares about that. The only thing anyone cares about is if they can flip Manafort to say something about Trump. So, I mean, like, why is everything done under false pretexts? You know, there should be something against that. It, using the Justice Department under false pre pretext to this extent? It's not even a question of whether it's under false pretext. Does anyone care if if Cohen committed some kind of campaign finance issue with Trump? I, this happens every single election, ca campaign finance problems. They just pay small fines and to be done with it. This whole thing, everything, is just a, it's this huge party of false pretext. The internet and connecting platforms is bringing about their downfall. Whoa, oh, almost died. So, you know, that's a pretty huge problem. Trump at least tweets about it and kind of gives, in my estimation, a more accurate uh, picture of people's motivations in this issue. Problem is, so I listen to, uh, try to listen to Scott Adams a, a decent amount. He gives he gives good good perspectives on things. Uh, a lot of times you get to hear different points from him uh, than you'd hear anywhere else, which is which is why I like it. I don't want to hear the same thing all the time. That's why I follow a lot of left leaning Twitter accounts too, just to kind of hear what they're saying. And he talks a lot about how you can't mind read, you can't mind read people. Uh, and, you know, it's true, but at the same time, there's this, oh, damn, there's this sort of issue with you kind of have to be able to mind read people to stop them from being, from doing criminal activities. Like, so, okay, here's a good, I, I was kind of tweeting about this earlier. Here's a good example. I think that if you just sort of outside of the current political context. If you just say, you know, sort of like take a poll or whatever of the American people and say, all right, is it okay for the FBI to make up charges about whatever and then use those made up charges to then get a warrant and take all your stuff, uh, find a crime, and then indict you on that new crime that has nothing to do, obviously, with the made-up charges. Well, I think every single person would say, well, no, that's that's not okay. They can't be allowed to do that. And if they do do that, there should definitely be consequences, like, for sure. So that's not even, not even a question. So, okay, so we know that that's not allowed, right? Well, here's the problem. How do we prove that's what they're doing, right? 
Because you're talking essentially at mind reading because what you're saying is, is well, if they don't really believe, if they don't really believe that this crime is real and they're just making it up, then they shouldn't be able to, they shouldn't be able to get a warrant for it. Uh, even if they can produce evidence that's like, you know, manufactured, right? Oh, jeez. Damn, that's a tough wave. So, in order to stop someone from doing that, you have to be able to somehow prove that they don't really believe this is a real election. So how? How do you do it? Right? So, you know, Scott, I understand. Yeah. Don't try to read people's minds and whatever their clarification is, accept that clarification. But hey, okay, so then how do we stop people from making up, people within the, the Department of Justice from making up investigations and getting warrants and prosecuting on different charges? How do we stop it? How do we prove that they don't really believe the investigation is real? They're just doing it for another reason, right? It can it can look like that all it wants, but hey, if they don't if they don't say it, if they don't clarify, what do they do? They have to specifically write it down somewhere and like intentionally cri uh, incriminate themselves. It makes no sense. So at some level, in order to prevent from crimes taking uh, crimes from taking place, you you have to be able to go into intentions or likely intentions or, you know, start addressing these types of issues at some level. Now, you know, maybe Scott's maybe Scott's rule for accepting a clarification is more so in like a social media setting, right? That's not a crime that we're talking about. It's it's more so just general commentary on stuff that's not criminal. And I'm okay with that. Like, that's fine. I think for that, I agree. But for the other thing... No way. I mean, we got to hold government officials accountable at some level in some way, shape, or form. And, I, you know, that's what I keep sort of trying to say. And that's, that's what it seems like is just not getting much play. Everyone just wants to sort of talk about uh, the current, like, whatever, however the news is framing an issue, that's how everyone talks about it, right? They just, another sort of persuasion term, thinking past the sale. That's all they do is they just get you to think past the sale. And now everyone's talking about, you know, Manafort and Cohen way past. They're just talking about the fact that they're indicted and like what this means for Trump and if they should have been found guilty or not and all this. And no one's even discussing how they were allowed to raid all of Manafort and Cohen's stuff in the first place based on based on supposedly. Oh, here's Hillary. Crooked Hillary. Son of a gun. Based on supposedly an investigation that. There's no evidence for. Oh no! Based on an investigation, there's just no no evidence for, and there's no evidence coming for, and no one's even saying that within any position of power or that any of this is happening. So like, okay, Manafort, Cohen, Roger Stone supposedly maybe next. At what point of them finding no Russian collusion do we just say, hey, like you have to stop now? You know, like. You got to find some collusion at some point. You can't just continuously, right? And like, let's say there was real collusion, okay? Like, the insane question, you know, the, the insane uh, thing. Like, there was collusion. Well, what are the chances that there was collusion? And they just raided Trump's lawyer and Trump's one of Trump's campaign managers, and they found nothing. It's like, wow, that was some pretty sneaky collusion. If there is objection, and I note the senator from Kentucky on the floor, I will say before I read this, if there is objection, you are achieving the objectives of Vladimir Putin. I object. The senator from Kentucky is now working for Vladimir Putin. It's illegal and unconstitutional. You know, you're going to have to shut up or I'm going to have you arrested. Trump makes my life difficult. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I'm calling for the impeachment of this president. <laughs> All right, we've got to stop McCain and his crew from impeaching this POTUS the with the help of Rand Paul. I'm not going to take Vladimir it anymore. Vladimir Putin's a thug and a murderer and a killer. I never met Putin. I don't know who Putin is. I haven't heard from John McCain in a while, but I'll tell you, he is sure... Sure seems to be toughing it out for an 80-year-old with brain cancer. I hear that stuff can be pretty deadly. So, in my estimation, 
and I think in most Trump supporters' estimations, we have a massive abuse of the criminal justice system that very few are even are even discussing or talking about. It's just almost surreal at times to listen to it. You know, it, it's it's very difficult, I think, this mentally to process. Uh, this American carnage stops right here and stops right now. I will restore law and order to our country. I didn't want to have to do this. Got to get our good good guy senators in into play by the speech. So. It's just really tough to process mentally, just watching the news and listening to all this, because, and this isn't just the left. I mean, I, I gotta be honest, the right does it too, less so, but they do do it. Everybody doing things under false pretext. I mean, it is just, it's just like torturous for an even remotely was elected, honest can't person. Possibly imagine the steps taken prior to losing power to ensure future safety and control. Take Trump out tonight. If we are attacked, somebody attacks him. Wouldn't you rather have Trump as president if we're attacked? Oh, we'll beat the shit out of them. <laughs> this is unbelievable. So, then there's all these people. Oh my gosh, I can't even stand this. On the left, when they talk about how, uh, like, Trump is such a, is such a, has a poor moral compass and um, is a horrible role model and is a horrible person and is a disgrace and is dishonest. And it's like they say this comparing him to other presidents. <laughs> it's like, I, you know, are these people truly that naive, right? Like, do they think that the persona that Barack Obama, George Bush, and Bill Clinton, and for that matter, Hillary Clinton, the personas that they put forth to the public and to the news media are their actual real life personas. Like, they don't lie. They always tell the truth. They, uh, you know, I mean, really? Like, <laughs> these people are some of the largest liars of all time, just guaranteed. Not even a question. And this is right and left. They're politicians. Everyone knows they lie. So this fake outrage about Trump being a liar, it's like, even if Trump is a liar, what are you comparing him to? You're comparing him to, basically, you're comparing him to people who were who were liars and pretended they were truth tellers. Trump even said, I'm, I'm no angel. And I mean, I don't think he's going to deny that he's lied many times. He does it to accomplish the goals that he's trying to accomplish. But at least he's not pretending to be something he's not. I mean, you look at him in rallies, you look at him on Twitter, like, Trump is the most transparent president of all time. Of all time. Maybe not at the beginning, because, I mean, George Washington and those guys, well, George Washington's got a ton of letters that are, uh, I don't know how, if they were public back then, probably not. But, um, you know, I guess after the fact, a lot of those things become pretty transparent. Uh, but obviously these guys signed the Declaration of Independence and they weren't hiding their thoughts on things. They had a lot of open discourse about banks. That would be a fun thing to talk about is the banks, actually. But Donald Trump definitely in modern, in, in recent, I mean the last hundred years easily, is the most, the most uh, honest in terms of who he presents that he is to the news media and to Twitter and his rallies. <laughs> Excuse me, that is exactly who he is. There's no there's no question about that. Oh, the banks. The banks, the banks. I went through a time, a portion of time where I researched the banks. And when I try to tell people about it, it's like people don't even believe me how banks are run. They don't even... They have no clue. So I'll usually ask, and this is people, even people who work for banks, I say, okay, well, you know, when a, when a bank lends a person money, right? Like if someone's getting a house uh, or just essentially any, any loan, when a bank lends a person money, where does the money come from? 
Simple question, right? Where does it come from? So most people think that when asked, and if they haven't, uh, if they haven't looked into it, we'll say, well, the bank, the bank has money, you know, because people, people put money store money with them and they make money based on whatever and then they have a bunch of money so then they lend that money out to people and charge interest on it and you'd think that that, that that's the case and if if that was the case well you know that would be totally fine that's legal no problem with that no biggie that's not how it works if you want to know how it works you need only to look up something called fractional reserve banking and essentially what that means is all banks that are registered with uh, there's some government organization run by the fed um, they're part of a little group that allows them to do this and they get to lend out up to 90 percent more money than they actually have Okay, so this means that when you go for a loan, the banks just create the money, or at least 90% of it, out of thin air. Well, that can't be, you say? Certainly not. Well, look it up, fr fractional reserve banking. So a lot of times what I do is I pose the question this way. Let's imagine for a moment that the federal government of the United States came to you and said uh or came to me and said chris i think uh, it may be time to give the president we are going to out. allow you to create money basically print money as long as you have 10 percent of it whatever you have right now you can you can do you know increase that by tenfold and you can loan that money out and charge interest on it monthly monthly interest on it and uh, we will definitely stand by you in court and with our guns and with our prisons if people don't pay you back. And that's that's real money. You can do it. How long would it take me to get rich if I could do that? Uh, I'll give you a hint. It would be really, really quick. It would be quick and easy because that's cheating. It's like playing Monopoly and just... Drawing your money. Drawing your money on a piece of paper. Now again, if you're listening to this, you probably think that, nah, bullshit, there's no way that Chris is right about that. Look it up. Fractional Reserve Banking. You have to be part of the special group, but if you are, that's what they do. Uh... Why Why are they allowed to charge interest on money that's not theirs? That's, that's insane. It's insane stuff. So why does the government allow them to do that? I mean, we've got a situation where just the, the entire world is in a pretty, pretty messed up state in terms of In terms of, uh, I guess you would say people at the top having sort of, whoa, a monopoly. Oh, man. Oh, that was so close. Having monopoly on power and being able to keep that power. And I'm not saying that to try to complain or anything. I live my life. Um, I'm happy to live in America. But I think more so. Most Americans could not give But I think I think more so than than trying to change it or anything like that. For me, at least, it's about it's about people not realizing it. That's the killer, you know. If people knew it and accepted it, that would be a lot easier to swallow than the fact that it's it's like a secret, you know? If, 
Man, things are getting intense now. Oh. Those bullets come from a lot of different directions. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh. It's a hard game. Want to say this? We've had many people over the years, for many, many years, saying the same thing. This is the country. Let these shield guys fall down to the bottom there. Not Spanish. Most Americans could not give a flying flip. <laughs> Ted Cruz. Down again. <laughs> but back to Manafort and Cohen from the bank thing. These guys are not, I'm sure, guiltless guys, right? Like, I'm not trying to feel sorry for them or, or anything of that nature. In fact, the crimes that they supposedly committed, I mean, they probably, you know, perhaps have even done worse than that in the grand scheme of things. Uh, it's just this, this, this sense of... Uh, A sense of false pretext that kills me. And I do. Got him. Come on, Chris. Be careful. Don't die. Oh. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Whoa. Minigun? Oh. Alright, what do we got? Four bullets left in the sniper. A bunch of shield guys down there. helps a lot with the killing the taming of the shrew let's call it two bullets left not great you take on the intelligence community oh. six ways from Sunday at getting back at you darn it Gotta shoot those ho oh. Okay, so also, I have to be careful because they are going to get to that impeach button pretty soon, but I think maybe I can I can just get her before they get to it. Come on, come on. Ah, I got her. Woo, that was a tough one. moving forward with a world government plan, and if you can't admit there's a shadow government running the show, if you can't admit Hillary's above the law, everyone will soon get chips. Soon you won't have a body. Soon there won't be any humans. They, these people are crazy. But here's the problem. They're, they've taken over. Alex Jones, you are under a warrant. God damn them to hell. We're under attack. We have this choice. Do you want an AI future in AI alignment, or do you want a pro-human ethical alignment? And those lines have been drawn. We're going to be at the historic Alamo with the line in the sand. Alex Jones, I will not let you down. You will be 
very, very uh, impressed, I hope. Разрешения спрашивать не будет. We are at the Alamo. Google plan to create AI. I'm not gonna go along with it! Alex Jones in the news for being banned. It is a crazy movie we're watching up in the political sphere. I will say that. Alright, well that's all I had to say about Cohen and Manafort. I think there should be a lot more discussion out there concerning the Fourth Amendment, illegal search and seizure, and the FBI making up stuff and how we determine whether that's the case because that is that is total bull crap. And uh, maybe we'll do another stream here and start from the Alamo. Start from the Alamo next time. Thanks for watching, bros.